بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We welcome the month of Ramadan with ibadah. The first thing we do, we see the moon, we say the dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let the moon be seen whilst we are in the condition of belief. And we ask Allah Almighty to grant us the success of this beautiful month of Ramadan. The fact that we have entered it is an answer to a dua we've been making for months. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allah has granted it to us. So every time we said, Oh Allah, grant us the ability to witness the month of Ramadan. Well, here he has done it. What was the point of that dua? The point of that dua was we wanted Allah to give us one more opportunity to witness the month of forgiveness. I need the forgiveness of Allah, so I need to forgive others who have wronged me as well to the best of my ability. It might not be so easy. Sometimes we find people having done something terrible to us. Well, I tell you, even if you want to stay away from them because you fear they might do it again, try to find it in your heart to at least just let go because then Allah will let go of your sins as well. وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Forgive and embrace. Would you not like that Allah forgive you? Meaning in return for that? When you show that you are forgiving, Allah will show you that He is the most forgiving. So this is the month of forgiveness like that verse of Surah An-Nur I just read now ends saying, Indeed, Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. My brothers and sisters, it is the month of greatness, the best month of the Islamic calendar. We welcome it by making promises to Allah that we are not going to go back to our bad ways and habits even when the month comes to an end. We welcome it knowing that some of us might not witness the end of Ramadan. Am I right? We welcome it knowing that some of us might not see the day of Eid or we might not even see the night of decree. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to witness the end of Ramadan and the day of Eid. But more important than asking Allah to grant us the ability to witness it is to promise what you are going to do if you witness it. We asked Allah to give us the month of Ramadan. I want to tell you it's the month of the Quran. At a loss is the one who does not pick up the Quran every day and read a portion. At a loss. You haven't understood the month of the Quran. It might be compulsory to fast. And one might argue it may not be absolutely compulsory to read certain portions of the Quran. But it being the month of Ramadan, the month of the Quran, you must make sure that your connection with the Quran is the most in this particular month. That's the word of Allah. If you don't recognize Allah, you don't understand his word and you're not making an effort to understand it, then surely you are at a loss. We can do better. This is the month where we may not get proper sleep and it is an honor. Did you hear what I said? This is a month where it is not a month of sleeping and eating. No, it is a month of dedication. You need to engage in extra acts of worship. That's what the month is all about. Quran, you recite. You try to learn the meaning. You try to, pure, you try to correct your recitation. You try to follow what Allah Almighty has said. Similarly, it is a month where you become conscious of all your other deeds. Don't we give a charity in the month of Ramadan more than other months? A lot of people hold their zakah, which is compulsory to give it in Ramadan. And many people would like to give extra charities in Ramadan. Do you know why? The deeds are multiplied in this month of Ramadan. The reward of the deeds definitely multiplied in this beautiful month of Ramadan. I want multiplication. Do your deeds. If you've been committing a sin or you have a simple bad habit, promise to quit it and quit it. If you are serious, Allah will grant you the ability and Allah will bless you in return. If this is a month of solving matters and problems, if you have an issue at home, 
make sure you sit and remedy the issue be it with your wife or be it with your family members brothers and sisters parents children or in-laws maybe uncles and aunts nephews nieces cousins maybe in the community it's a time to resolve matters to the best of your ability may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts Brothers and sisters, it's a month of generosity. The Prophet ﷺ was so generous in this month that he, his generosity reached everyone as though when the wind blows and it reaches every single person at once, similar is the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ. What was that generosity? Not just giving, but helping. Are you going to help others or is it just about yourself? This is the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan, we stay away from food and drink. We know that. We stay away from permissible things. It's not haram to consume or to drink some water on an ordinary day. But in Ramadan, during the daylight, Allah says it's prohibited. But water? What's wrong with water? Well, Allah says, you know what? Practice restraint. Don't just become greedy. And don't be a person who's miserly. Don't be a person who sees things and wants everything, be it permissible or not. You have 50 pairs of clothes, but each time you go to the mall, you need another pair of clothes. You have 20 handbags. In fact, not 20. Someone actually told me they have 100 handbags. I don't know if they were joking or not. But trust me, nowadays, with this community and society and where we've headed because of social media and everything else, I wouldn't put it past people. 100 handbags. What are you going to do? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to prepare for the day of Qiyamah with a hundred good deeds. People say, I've got this and I've got... Ramadan is a month of discipline teaching you don't just get whatever you want, even though you can afford it. If it is a waste, leave it. Help someone else. Let me explain why. Today we see people, mashallah, beautiful homes, lovely cars, nice clothing. They're smelling good and they're looking good. When we see them, we say, mashallah, what a, what a gifted person. They've been blessed by Allah. Just because we saw those things I mentioned. Not realizing that if the person did not prepare for the akhirah by doing multiple deeds in Ramadan, then you find another guy who doesn't have a home, who perhaps is struggling no job, perhaps is smelling a bit because he didn't have water to bath maybe perhaps he might have a little bit of struggle with his breath he might have struggles with because he doesn't eat he can't he doesn't have food if that person has invested in salah and quran and dhikr and good deeds they have the true success of the hereafter for eternity what's the point of me being beautiful and successful on earth and everyone wishes to have what i have the day my eyes close and after that, we get to the hereafter. And then I see the loss because I forgot to prepare for the day I'm going to close my eyes. That is the day of the greatest loss. Allah says such a person has lost completely. Who is the loser? The loser is the one who lost the hereafter more than anything else. So when you see a pauper who's preparing for the hereafter, wallahi, he is better than a wealthy man who's preparing to fly on a holiday, but forgot Allah. The month of Ramadan comes in again and again because Allah wants us to enjoy both. Allah is telling you, you're working hard throughout the year. MashaAllah, I want you to spend one month working hard, work, working hard, earning the palace of the hereafter. It's not impossible. Earn the palace of the hereafter. You will enjoy it. I have struggles. You have struggles. Your health might be failing a little bit. My problems that I have, you may not know them, but we all do have issues. Allah says, don't worry. Prepare for the hereafter in the process. Sometimes these issues are there to tap you, to say, come, come to the masjid. That's why when we have problems and we believe in Allah, don't those problems make us cry to Allah? Don't those problems soften us a little bit? So what was that? It's a gift. Allah says, I gave you a problem here so that you can enjoy there. Wow. Subhanallah. I gave you an issue here so that you can enjoy there. Some people's lives are such that they don't see solution to their problems in this world. Allah says, don't despair. I will give you the hereafter. Do you believe? Yes, you do. Well, if that's the case, no problem. Whatever you've been through on earth, it will be a bonus for you on the day of Qiyamah. 
So we have the month of Ramadan to focus on building the hereafter. Do deeds. Each deed you do multiplied by 10, multiplied by 100, multiplied by 700 and beyond because it's the month of Ramadan. So this is the month where you must become conscious of it. How much Quran are you going to read? We're promising Allah. Taraweeh is not a joke. Some might argue, well, it's not farad. I know it's not farad, but it is so highly recommended. You should enjoy it. The term taraweeh itself depicts a beautiful rest. I'm going to come and enjoy myself. I'm going to achieve raha. I'm going to relax with taraweeh. Many of us, we hear the Imam reciting and we say, this guy is very slow. This guy is very slow. By the time he finishes, it's going to be suhoor. Wallahi, it's not about slow or fast. It's about a correct, beautiful recital. Beautiful recital. Enjoy it. It's the word of Allah. If the word of Allah is irritating you, and then you have the beat that makes you shake, that does not irritate you, then you have a problem. You have a major problem. Do you know why? The wrong things are irritating you. Subhanallah. But at times, we don't mind listening to something quite dirty all night. But when it came to إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ You can hear every letter, can't you? People say, hey, that's too slow for taraweeh. You're supposed to say, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ That's taraweeh. No, you are wrong. This is the month where we're going to change that, inshallah. We're going to change that. Enjoy your taraweeh. You are building your akhirah. You are building your palace. It is the month where shaitan is distanced from us, but still we do wrong things. Do you know why? I always say we become little devils ourselves. May Allah protect us. There's big explanation as to why Satan still comes about in Ramadan when he's supposed to be tied. The best explanation is that the chiefs are tied up. The main ones are tied up. But the little ones, they're roaming around. They come and disturb you and I in Ramadan, get angry. It's the month of discipline, the month of habit building. Build your habits. Watch your tongue. Wallahi, Ramadan is a month of watching your tongue. Because the Prophet ﷺ says that clearly, that those who are going to protect their tongues will achieve the reward. Those who are not going to bother what they say and they utter falsehood and whatever else, vulgarity, they wasted their time fasting. They wasted their time fasting. So this is why we say, my brothers, my sisters, watch your mouth in Ramadan. Your life will change when you watch that because after Ramadan, you become conscious. Let me say good words, beautiful words. Connect with Allah. If I can do taraweeh for the entire month, mashallah, I come faithfully standing, faithfully standing in taraweeh. I promise you the five daily farad will become very simple for me. It's like so easy in two minutes, five minutes and it's done. Mashallah, it's going to be easy. But if I'm not going to push myself in this month, I'm going to lose it. This afternoon, or this afternoon, I was thinking about how old I am and how many Ramadans I've seen. So say, for example, without giving my age away, some of you might know it. Say, say for example, I've had 50 Ramadans. I'm never, ever going to have 50 more Ramadans. Do you know why? We're not going to live to 100. We're not. Chances are almost no. When I say almost no, eh, not point, not something percent, which is not counted. The bulk of us, 60, 70, 70, 80, gone. Guess what? How many Ramadans left? A few Ramadans left for you. How serious are you going to take these Ramadans? It might be the last one, like I said, right at the beginning. But nonetheless, if you want to think that perhaps I'm going to live through a few more, how many more? So if there's six more left because you're already 70 years old, if you think you might die at say 76, and what gives you the guarantee you're going to die at 76? I promise you one thing. When you begin to enjoy your acts of worship, you start looking forward to the meeting with Allah because you know you're going to go back to a Lord who's merciful, who's kind, who's forgiving. So Allah gives you the month of Ramadan to be able to reflect again and again. Please ponder during this month over who you are, where you came from, where you are right now, what is expected of you, what you are doing, what you are not doing, what needs to be done, because where are you heading? Ponder over that. Where are you heading? What would you like? So stay away from bad habits, bad company, flock to the masajid and enjoy, bring others with you. Make it something meaningful, reach out to people, feed the people. MashaAllah, be helpful, be kind in your homes. 
learn to dress better. No matter how you are dressing, there's always a better way of dressing. And part of your dress code is where you allow your eyes to go. What's the point of allowing your eyes to go everywhere, you know? Subhanallah. And you covered up. What was the point? So to watch your eyes. That's why Allah Almighty, when He talks about it, He talks about lowering the gaze, both for the male and the female. Tell the believing men to lower their gazes and protect their private parts. Straight up statement. Straight up. Imagine. Allah is telling you, lower your gaze, protect your private parts. May Allah protect us. My brothers and sisters, we're going to enjoy this month by the will of Allah. Enjoy it in ibadah, in Quran, in tilawah, in helping out one another, reaching out. Our brothers and sisters in Gaza are struggling. There are restrictions on Masjid Al-Aqsa right now. May Allah grant them the ability to fulfill all their salawat in Masjid Al-Aqsa during this month of Ramadan. May Allah protect them from the harm of those who intend harm because too many people intend harm against this Ummah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The purity, they frightened of it. They frightened of the purity of worship. They frightened that people are increasing in number in terms of entry into the fold of Islam. They frightened of it. May Allah Almighty protect us all. So I don't wish to go beyond 20 minutes. Nonetheless, this evening we read verses where Allah Almighty told us about the condition of the believers who do good deeds, they will enter paradise. And he told us about the disbelievers who are not interested in the hereafter, they will go to hellfire. It's Allah. Allah says, and it's up to him. He says that the hypocrites who are neither here nor there, or those who hide the fact that they are not Muslim and pretend to be Muslim, for them, Allah says, we will deal them a severe blow and they will suffer in this world and the next. May Allah Almighty protect us from disbelief and hypocrisy. And may he help us to connect ourselves with him in a beautiful way. My brothers and sisters, I give you one beautiful gift. When we speak of the month of Ramadan, Allah says, I prescribed upon you fasting. And at the end of the verse, he gives you the reason. He says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ he says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ We've heard that so many times. Every year we hear it. It means if you fast properly and you do whatever I've told you to do, the reason why I told you to do all of this is in order for you to achieve taqwa. Right? So if you do it properly, you'll achieve taqwa. So if I achieve taqwa, one might ask, what will I get? Well, Allah says, in the same Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah says, compete with one another or make haste towards سَارِعُوا الْمُسَارَعَةِ Make haste faster than others. Make haste towards the forgiveness of Allah and paradise. Paradise its size is greater than the skies and the earth. It is prepared for the muttaqin. That's what Allah says. Uiddat lil muttaqin. So if you fast properly and you spend the month of Ramadan correctly, you achieve taqwa. And if you achieve taqwa, you will achieve paradise. Because Allah says, we prepared paradise for those with taqwa. Uiddat lil muttaqin. You see the connection between the two? You're fasting. Allah says, so that you can get taqwa. Now that I have taqwa, Allah says, well, we've prepared something for those with taqwa and welcome because now you have taqwa. So enter Jannah. Subhanallah. How do I know I have taqwa? You know if you have taqwa or not when you're conscious of the rules and regulations of Allah. If you made a mistake or you sinned, it hurts you. It makes you regret. It's a sign of taqwa. You have to repent. Sign of taqwa. That's why Allah says, Sari'u ila maghfira min rabbikum. Make haste towards forgiveness. You committed a sin, quickly repent, don't delay. Quickly repent. When an obligation is upon you and you fulfill it, that is a sign of taqwa. When I can't wait to pray, 
and I'm so excited. I want to do the good deed. It's a sign of piety. And I want to tell you, Allah does not just accept anyone and everyone to do good deeds. He chooses you. How does he choose you? By putting it into your heart. Let me go and pray. Let me do this good deed. Otherwise, we could say, you know what? I'm so tired. I was at school all day. I went to varsity all day. I was at work all day. And you know what? I need to sleep. Let me just quickly shower, eat, and go and sleep. What about prayer? It didn't even feature in your equation. That was Allah rejecting you because you rejected him. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But when a person is conscious about his income, he's conscious about his food, he wants to help others, automatically Allah will help him to develop a piety. One day you'll find him coming to the masjid and when he tastes the sweetness of Iman, he will never quit it again. Allah invites you to come to pray. And Allah invites you to come to pray in such a unique way that if you feel that you need to pray and you feel connected to prayer and you feel at a loss when you've missed a prayer, you need to know that you've answered the call. Hayyal al-falah. Come to success. Whose invite is that? Allah. Allah told you come to success and you're quickly coming. Wallahi, you should be considering yourself honored that you came. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant us the strength and the energy to do the right things. May he always keep our hearts magnetized towards the masjid. May he always want, may he energize us to do the right things. And whenever there's wrong things to do, may he create a barrier between us and those wrong things. Because man in his nature, he sits and he schemes and he plans. He plans how to do things in the wrong way sometimes. He plans to sit and to go and attend a place perhaps to go to the clubs or the pubs or to eat a bit of interest or perhaps to commit adultery or to go and gamble or do alcohol or do intoxicants man sits and schemes and plans if you make a dua oh allah create a barrier between me and the sins allah will put a barrier between you and those sins as you want to go somewhere suddenly you have a flat tire what happened allah says we just answered your dua Everybody's going to be busy at the club for two hours and you're going to be busy fixing your tire. So don't swear saying Fs and Bs. Just say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. Take the tire out, put it back. Because you need to know that was Allah. He loves you enough that you didn't end up there. Allahu Akbar, month of Ramadan. Remember, and this is the last thing I'm going to end with it. Don't plan to sin in Ramadan. No way. No way. You know, if you aren't so strong to be able to do so many good deeds, the minimum is don't sin. Don't you agree with that? The biggest gift you could give yourself is to abstain from sinning because you're already now sitting on zero. Then you can start doing good deeds. But when you start sinning, you're on minus, minus 10, minus 20. Come on. Month of Ramadan, if you are going to do good deeds, it will be multiplied. If you don't honor this month, then the bad deeds might drag you down. May Allah Almighty protect all of us. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.